All right, guys, what's going on? So I just finished an article on the three main causes of bunions. I'm going to be reading off my computer if you're wondering why I'm looking down. But um, I finished this article uh, because this is an important one for me to have out there. Bunions are something I've been referring to for a couple of years now because I had one a couple of years ago. Uh, luckily, mine wasn't very like developed, so it wasn't too bad. Um, I ended up fixing it in a pretty short amount of time, but it definitely bothered me. It definitely, uh, it hindered me playing soccer. It hindered me, uh, doing Taekwondo. Didn't stop me completely, but it definitely made me sit out a couple more times than I would have. Um, and I know it bothers a lot of people. It, it makes a lot of people like have to sit out of whatever they're doing. Uh, it makes people have to like change their shoes because they don't fit into their shoes the same anymore. So it can definitely be problematic as well as just very painful. So I finally got this article out and I'm just going to go over the three pretty quickly. You can um, read the article. It'll be linked in the description below if you want. Uh, it'll go into more depth than I'm going to here. But so basically three main causes, they're actually fairly simple if you ask me. The last two uh, require a little of explanation, but not too much. First one is very obvious. You could probably guess it right off the bat if you follow any kind of content like this. It's gonna be shoes with narrow toe boxes. Um, most shoes, <laughs> really all conventional shoes, you know, anything that's not like a barefoot shoe or a minimalist shoe, is going to be too narrow in the toe box. I remember even when I used to uh, look for wide-toed shoes, like for example from New Balance or something, um, they're not even close to what they should be. I mean they're maybe like millimeters better than a regular shoe, like a Nike, Adidas, whatever, but they still don't even compare to a barefoot shoe something like from Zero Shoes or from Vivo Barefoot um, that are actually round at the edge of the toe box like they should be rather than coming to a point. So anyway, narrow toe boxes, that is the most prominent cause of bunions. I mean, when you look at a person's foot who is in pain, their toes have literally been molded to come to a point. The big toe is in an angle, it's called hallux valgus, uh, and then the toes in the middle are usually bent. They're actually bent to come to a point. Like that's how mine are. Mine are actually, you know, the second and the fourth one kind of come to a point, which is definitely not how they should be, but that's how they have been trained to be. And that's the key word right there because your toes are smashed into a shoe that they don't actually fit in. So your toes learn to fit into that space because you're wearing shoes every day, probably all day. You're in school, you're at work, doing whatever, you're probably wearing shoes. I mean, it, you'd be hard pressed to find someone who does not wear shoes that often. Um, anyway, it, uh, the biggest cause is definitely the footwear. And um, just because we're talking about this, I'll probably link uh, Zero Shoes, which are my favorite barefoot shoes. I'm going to link those below this video because that's what I wear the majority of the time and I definitely credit those with helping me get rid of that bunion. Uh, it was around the time that I had plantar fasciitis as well and those shoes definitely helped me with both. So second one is going to be poor ankle mobility. More specifically, it's a lack of dorsiflexion. Dorsiflexion is basically the movement that your foot makes to in order to bend back. So to bring the toes towards the shin or the knee, that's dorsiflexion. So picture yourself squatting or lunging and the ankles have to bend, it's that motion. So most people, you know, they've been raised wearing conventional footwear. Conventional footwear has, well, a lot of problems, but a huge one is the raised heel. We just talked about the narrow toe box. But the raised heel is another big one too. It really messes with people's ankle mobility. It messes with their Achilles length, their Achilles elasticity. So basically most people are gonna have poor ankle mobility because 
unless they were doing something about it or they're just really young and haven't been affected badly yet, probably gonna be limited at this point. So anyway, um, what happens with this is, you know, we get poor ankle mobility and our body basically seeks out a way to keep the ankle mobile because if it left it alone, the ankle wouldn't be mobile enough for us to walk and run properly because you do need good dorsiflexion to be able to take longer strides. So if you didn't have good mobility there, you'd have a pretty hard time running. And I don't even just mean in terms of pain, I mean in terms of your ankle literally would not bend enough. So what does the body do? The body basically says, I'm gonna mobilize the ankle in the, the other way that I know, which is pronation. Pronation, sorry, a lot of terms here. Hopefully you're aware of at least some of them. But pronation is where it's the shock absorption technique for the feet. It's basically the feet hit the ground, but they kind of dip in. They kind of dip in. The arms actually do this as well. If you've ever thrown a baseball and you've watched someone's arm kind of like recoil, it ends up going like this. And it's a way for the arm or the foot, like we're talking about, to kind of absorb the shock. It doesn't want to take too much impact. It wants to protect itself. So it's a natural process, pronation. It's a good thing. The problem though is when we lack the ankle mobility or the dorsiflexion, what ends up happening is that that pronation becomes excessive. It becomes over pronation because the body is trying to mobilize something to keep the ankle mobile. So then the problem here is that when that happens, the feet start turning out. They turn out and they're like duck feet. That's what I call it in here. And you should read the article because I actually have a perfect picture of myself walking and I got a picture of myself barefoot where you can see when you walk with your feet out wide that it kind of presses your big toe in. It's called side loading. So instead of your foot moving straight and kind of bouncing off the forefoot, you kind of get this drag and push off from the side of the big toe. And it's very irritating. If you have a bunion or if you're developing one, or you know, let's just say your big toe is already poorly positioned because of the narrow shoes, um, this constant push off off the side, it's pretty uncomfortable. And it's definitely going to worsen your condition, whether you have a bunion yet or not. Last point, and this is very similar to the last one, flat feet. Particularly flat feet from your arches collapsing. So you have foot arches, they should be strong. If you, if you were barefoot, they would be strong. But because we're in shoes that pinch our toes in all the time, arches become weak because they need the big toes to grip and to actually uh, basically promote the strength of the arch. That's where a lot of it comes from, is through that big toe and some through the second toe as well. But, you know, a lot of people are gonna experience a at least partial, if not full, arch collapse. And when this happens, this kind of goes right back into the second point, the, uh, you start over pronating. It's for a different reason this time that you're over pronating. Now it's from your arches just being weak. So now your, your foot basically is not strong enough to regulate its own pronation. So yet again, we find ourselves back at over pronation. So now you're doing it too much. Your foot is turned out wide. You're doing the duck thing again, and you're pushing off the side of the big toe. So yet again, um, this could either be something you're also experiencing, or maybe this is your only problem here. But again, you're getting that side load push off of the big toe joint, and that's not comfortable. That is not what the big toe joint was meant to do. So it's definitely uncomfortable. It will definitely worsen your condition if you're already vulnerable. So anyway, I'm going to leave it at that. Um, I've already gone kind of long here, longer than I thought I would. But basically, I've got the three um, causes of bunions 
listed in that article. That's what it's all about. Um, I have a lot of links in that article. If anything that I just said here doesn't make sense, I would really go to the article and just follow the links because they always lead to more explanation around my blog of all these terms. Uh, some of them might be new to people. They were definitely new to me at a certain time, so I understand. So anyway, article is going to be linked below this video. Check that out. Um, I'd say share this video, share the article. Uh, and other than that, I might actually link the, uh, I like I said, the barefoot shoes, like zeros under this video too. So you can get a good idea of what um, better shoes would look like if you're not familiar. Uh, I wear those all the time. I really recommend them. But anyway, that's about it for now. I'll see you next time.